Welcome everyone to World City. I'm uh, Tim Hassid, Director of Placemaking at uh, Resonance, uh, and we're joined today by uh, Philip uh, Kionbareta, architect and founder of uh, PCA Stream. Hello, Philip. Hello. And uh, Marion uh, Valer, architect, heritage, public spaces advisor for the mayor's office uh, in Paris. Hello, Marion. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, together, we'll be uh, exploring how the uh, redesign of one of the most famous streets, the Champs-Élysées, uh, can transform a city like Paris, uh, both from a community perspective, but also from an urban uh, conception perspective. Uh, and Marion, I would like to start the conversation by asking you about uh, the mayor's outlook for Paris. Uh, you're, you've been uh, close to the mayor and uh, it, it, the, uh, her team in terms of actually shaping the future of the Champs-Élysées. So how does the Champs-Élysées uh, and its renovation and transformation fit into uh, the Paris uh, agenda? So thank you for the invitation. Um, the vision of the mayor of Paris is really to transform the city of Paris, which is a historic city, but that needs to adapt to the climatic, uh, to the climate challenges. So that ba basically what we do is greening the city, planting uh, a lot of trees and creating uh, new parks and everywhere we can create uh, new, um, yeah, new spaces for, for, green, uh, for green amenities and also uh, creating more space uh, for pedestrian and for, uh, for bikes. So we are like readapting the public space of Paris which was uh, disequilibrated in favor of cars and which was too mineral. So we really tried to, to change the shape of the city while, of course, respecting its heritage, uh, respecting uh, what makes uh, the beauty of Paris. And we think that there is a, there is a way where we can uh, adapt Paris and, uh, and make it more green. And of course, the Champs-Élysées are a symbol uh, of Paris, uh, well-known avenue and so we think that since before it was a, and it is still an uh, urban highway uh, it has also to to be a symbol of this new paris and of how paris can be uh, can be transformed thank you mario and, and from a, uh, a media perspective how has that resonated uh, across the globe in terms of taking a historic uh, avenue or, or boulevard and and really transforming it uh, towards uh, really shaping the future of our cities? Uh, actually, so there, was, uh, there were several studies uh, about the Champs-Élysées, uh, which were carried by uh, Philippe's office. And we were very happy to see that the, the, the echo in the media and among the public was very enthusiastic, which is a, a good, uh, which is a symbol of hope uh, for us. And, uh, and to see uh, what is, beautiful with this avenue is every time you talk about the Champs-Élysées, it has really a, a worldwide uh, echo. And so we think that we, we, we have to show that uh, implementation there is possible and that uh, we can transform this avenue because people from Paris are waiting for it, but also people from the greater Paris and people from everywhere because all people who come to, to Paris go to the Champs-Élysées. So it is really a project both for Paris and for elsewhere. Great to hear and uh, great to have uh, Philip who was uh, behind uh, some of these uh, studies from uh, the very beginning. Uh, Philip, uh, I'd love to hear about uh, you know, how you describe the Champs-Élysées uh, today and, and how you've brought this vision to life of the Champs-Élysées uh, in 2030 mm -hmm. and beyond in terms of actually reshaping uh, the city boulevard and one of the most iconic streets uh, in the world. Yeah, thank you for your invitation and uh, thank you, Marion, also for having this, this discussion together. Um, you know, the, the first thing I would like to say that the, the process uh, in way this adventure started is, is very unusual. And uh, I'm very happy that even this morning, this very morning, I, I was with the deputy mayor of Paris to launch officially the beginning of the renovation of the Champs-Élysées for the Olympic Games. So. Uh, it's very satisfactory for me that uh, we, we started this uh, thinking four years ago and mm -hmm. today uh, as we're talking is uh, was really the launch of the implementation of a first step of this vision what's interesting is that four years ago i was uh, asked by the committee of the Champs-Élysées, which is actually a group of the all the stakeholders of this avenue to 
came to me with a question why the Parisian don't like this avenue anymore. So it's very famous in the world. It used to be a, a very um, loved also by the Parisian from the beginning in the 17th century all the way to the 20th century. We know that in, in the literature, in, uh, in Balzac, in Proust, I mean, the, and we know it was a very popular place. And since 30 or 40 years ago, um, the Parisian have completely deserted the avenue. So uh, why and what can we do about it? That, that was the question that I was asked to us. And uh, we, we were, so, we decided to look at it in a way that could be stimulating for the imagination, somehow that could also be, um, you know, appreciated by the city of Paris, because of course we had no, you know, implicit or legal authority to come up with the idea, but it was just like thinking out of the box. And we proposed this idea that maybe the reason why the Parisians don't like the avenue anymore is because it became what we don't want anymore as a, as a city, uh, a lot of traffic, a uh, very mineral uh, city, a lot of, you know, tourism was a very heavy only consumption. And say maybe the reason why it became so unpopular is a symbol uh, now of what we need to change. And we propose to say, why don't we take this avenue with this incredible, you know, fame and uh, reputation in the world to make a statement of the capacity we could have to re-engineer and to make it a more uh, desirable, sustainable, an inclusive city. Uh, that was our sort of challenge, uh, strategy we proposed. And in the meantime, uh, we had the yellow jacket that came on the Champs Elysees, so the inclusivity mm -hmm. was really de demonstrated. Then we have the, you know, the, the pandemic of uh, the COVID, and then uh, we have no ch face with the challenge of having desirable cities. People are living from city today. So the fact of making them again desirable is really a challenge for all cities around the world. And lastly, for uh, you know, sustainability, I don't need to comment on that. I mean, every month that passes show how, how important it is. So our our vision was to say, how could we together all, as a city, but using all the strengths of the nation, economic strengths and also political strengths, uh, take that as a challenge to re-engineer in a way what happened in the past 50 years, uh, basically uh, after all the great acceleration and the place given to the to the automobile to reinvent a strong symbol of a desirable place uh, with more green area, uh, more pedestrian, reinventing the promenade and all what made in the past the fact that we were happy for the Parisian to go and spend time on the Champs-Élysées. Thanks, Philippe. Uh, you know, really uh, inspiring uh, uh, vision. And uh, you, know, you mentioned uh, some of the initial challenges. Um, of course, this project is broken into uh, two phases uh, leading up to the Olympic Games in 2024, and uh, then that uh, future vision that goes beyond in terms of really uh, shaping uh, the future of, of a boulevard, but also uh, of the city. Um, Marion, maybe you can talk about uh, you know, how the uses will be transformed. You mentioned that uh, right now it's uh, Champs-Élysées is a <clears throat> major through fare with a lot of traffic. Uh, you know, there are thousands of people, tourists, commuters, locals that transit through uh, the Champs-Élysées. Uh, in your mind, what will or how will the boulevard be used uh, in the future based on uh, the vision that we're uh, trying to uh, materialize and implement uh, based on what Philip shared with us? Um, I think it's important to have this global vision of the Champs-Élysées, so from Place de la Concorde mm -hmm. till um, Arc de Triomphe, because it starts by a garden what we call a Jardin des Champs-Élysées, uh, a place that a lot of people actually don't know because it's a bit, uh, say, uh, in uh, little, uh, little blocks and people don't see the unity of the space. But so it starts by a garden. And then there is this promenade, as Philippe said, which was, which used to be a promenade, the Champs-Élysées, but now people tend to, to see only the commercial aspect. And I think, the vision we share with the, with the committee of stakeholders and with Philippe is uh, that it has to be a mixed use avenue with a lot of culture. What makes really the, the history of the Champs-Élysées is culture there. So having uh, theaters, uh, cinemas, etc. So that you don't only go there to, to buy stuff, but also, you know, to, uh, to learn something, to be, um, to be moved by, by things, etc. 
And also it's important to have like great popular events on the avenue. So there are a lot of events, for example, the arrival of the Tour de France or events like that. And we think that's an important direct dimension of this avenue. And so we want public space to be very welcoming to, to everybody, that everybody and, uh, and also Parisian people feel that they can go there and just have a walk and that it will be nice, meaning that there should be less noise and less pollution, because of course, if you have all the cars, it's not the nicest promenade uh, in Paris. And so that you can start by a uh, place de la and just have a nice walk with your children, with your family, etc. And, uh, and so it's really about changing the vision we have of this space and, um, and yes, giving more like free space to people to go there uh, so that they do what they want uh, there. Great, thank you uh, for sharing that. And uh, I think it makes a lot of sense uh, based on what we're seeing in, in, in diverse cities and, and how people are uh, coming back to cities and, and using our, our cities uh, today and experiencing these uh, both from a visitor but also a local perspective. Uh, Philippe, from a, a project perspective, uh, you've been involved since the beginning and you mentioned uh, the uh, support that you've had from, from various uh, organizations in terms of driving the vision. Uh, what are some of the challenges uh, when working on such a symbolic project uh, as the Champs-Élysées in terms of uh, working with the locals in terms of sharing that vision with the locals, but also from a political uh, or even business perspective, uh, what were some of your the main challenges uh, in order to really move the historic vision of the Champs-Élysées towards uh, a new vision, which is uh, transformative? Well, the, <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the big challenge is that um, you're dealing with, uh, with a great complexity. Uh, I mean, that's always the case. I mean, the city is a complex system. Uh, they are complex, dynamic system. And actually, the most uh, difficult challenge was to say, how do, you, how do you handle such a system? I mean, that's a general situation, I think, today with cities. So uh, that we are facing this, uh, this enormous complex system with questions that we didn't know before, say, desirability, sustainability. How do you measure today, you know, um, uh, so a carbon footprint of, of a, a, a part of the city is something that the science now, we, we don't have the scientific soul to do. We don't have the imagination and the, 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 the storytelling of the, and, and we don't have the process. So what we were facing uh, uh, from the very be beginning to say, how do we, could we invent a model to tackle, to embrace such a complex um, uh, phenomenon? And, uh, we wanted to not to do just something that would be a nice drawing. I mean, we didn't look at that as architect uh, talking about drawing and design. We look at it more as scientists and we create a group of, uh, you know, about 50 different people, in, including school like MIT, um, uh, uh, lab, um, Sciences Po, and different uh, lab also and engineers to work with us and try to modelize, understand the, the, the phenomenon. Of course, uh, you have to deal, and th th that was the, maybe the most complex uh, um, challenge. How do you the create a, a theoretical framework and also operational framework? Because we didn't want just to do a nice study uh, mm -hmm. and an exhibition. We wanted this to turn into reality. Uh, and um, so in terms of um, coming up, we, we discovered that coming with the right diagnostic, understanding clearly the problem and uh, trying to then to look at that more as a, as a doctor or as, let's say as a health problem and finding the cure which means to be uh, also more scientific uh, say how you can um, you know quantify the problem uh, trying to demonstrate the the, the the solution that you that you propose like the traffic is a big issue but traffic becomes a very uh, uh, immediately a very um, you know conflictual problem because you have the pro and co of the car. I mean the question is not about fighting against the car. It's, it's, it's trying to see how you can regulate in a more balanced and healthy way that you can uh, combine still a city that works and and, uh, and the PP that work. And uh, so you, we we wanted to to find also a scientific system uh, and at the same time uh, imaginary imaginary system. So um, we we came up after two years of work. With a framework that we call uh, Ville Metabolism, Metabolic City, mm -hmm. and is a vision. And you see that in order to 
generate consensus with uh, politician, with um, company investor, also with the public, having a clear vision that that is something that you can project yourself and say, what if it was this? Uh, then it's much easier uh, to uh, share energy. And we, I was very surprised that um, we had very little uh, attack on, on this vision. It was not conflictual. We 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 did some polls, not even polls, but like public consultation of a region, like hundred thousand people answer, and everybody showed great interest. So we was it was funny that people don't like the, the Champs Elysees in Paris. We had some polls proving that uh, really they have a bad image. But when it comes about, do we do we leave it like that, or do we do something to uh, you know to give opinion and idea? And and uh, our global vision was uh, really embraced by by the public. And that's a good lesson, a, a methodology, uh, a, a vision. And then we are now in, in a second phase where we are working on the feasibility. So it's more technical, but at least the desire, the political vision is, is, is shared. And that's the most important. And, and, and you mentioned this uh, concept and this framework called city uh, metabolism. Uh, from you know the city's perspective, do you see that being applied uh, more generally throughout Paris and in other cities? Well, uh, <clears throat> we we have the ambition that uh, apart from you know helping on making this a specific case on the Champs Elysees, and we we keep working and trying to with the city of Paris now that this giving as much support as we can, not to be the designer, but keeping to prove the, the general concept. And then we'll have a landscape architect designer that will that will do the project for the city of Paris. So I think in a way we, we stay at a you know at a urban planning uh, level, but uh, the ambition is that it becomes a sort of uh, you know new knowledge that we could apply to other neighborhood. We are now uh, being invited to to do a similar study on the Grand, uh, Avenue de la Grande Armée, which is the the okay. continuation of of the Champs Elysees. Uh, that is raising other kind of question because it's contacting the the Bois de Boulogne. Uh, it's it's uh, the connection with uh, outside of Paris. So it's it's the continuity, but with the specificity as opposed to the Champs Elysees. So very interesting. They will see how this method apply, uh, and we think it's something that 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 could be applied to other uh, to other city. We've been contacted by the city of New York, for instance, that are also reconsidering maybe the future of the Fifth Avenue. We had also discussion with the URA in uh, in Singapore. Uh, we have similar problem on Orchard Road. Uh, we also have been in contact with San Diego uh, in the states that, that have similar problem. We are doing. Uh, we have won a competition to work on the Philadelphia uh, Benjamin Franklin Parkway. So uh, we have also a similar question. So I think we can have a projection to turn that into a, a, a scientific model to uh, cure uh, with, as I was saying, maybe some kind of medical approach uh, of uh, health and uh, of the city in the future. And we turn that into a more scientific um, work, uh, creating a, a share of research with uh, Paris Sciences uh, de l'Université, PSL, that will be about uh, the, this concept of uh, ville metabolism. Thank you, very, uh, very inspiring. And Marion, from, from your perspective and you know, being at I'm working with the city. How does this project resonate in terms of seeing the success of how the vision has been embraced and uh, really looking at future possibilities for other parts of Paris and other transformations? Is this project really driving other transformations and building momentum in order to accelerate the transformation of the city and the resilience of the city? Uh, I think what is important in this project and quite uh, innovant, innovative is um, the link we have with the private sector, which is something more usual in the uh, like in the US or UK, but for France, um, it's it's quite a new model uh, to have this like public-private coalition. Because from our side, we believe that this project can only be made if there is a, a like a co-investment between public and private sector. Uh, because mm -hmm. uh, Champs Elysees, of course, it's a lot of money uh, made uh, from real estate, from shops, etc. And also because we want to have the shared vision, because we think that uh, the project will succeed only if we have all like the owners and the shops that want this project and that that share the vision for us. 
because uh, the of course shops are uh, also a, a, a big part of like animating public space so that's the first thing and so if we succeed on the champs elysees i think it can uh, inspire us also for other spaces uh, uh, in paris and of course also from a symbolic uh, point of view as i said like if we can transform the champs elysees like we can transform uh, any avenue in Paris and any avenue in the world because it's so symbolic and also in terms of traffic, it's it's so heavy that if we can do it on the Champs Elysees, I'm sure we can do it uh, uh, elsewhere and we can also inspire other cities in the world. So that's why it's a, a very important project. Well, it's uh, based on what Philip uh, shared with us. It clearly resonates with uh, other cities who face uh, similar issues, which is uh, really uh, interesting to hear and uh, I think for Champs-Élysées has maybe a chance to become a, a global benchmark in from in that nature in terms of how you transform some of these iconic uh, streets. Um, in terms of vision and image uh, you know being as such of a, an iconic uh, boulevard uh, how do you think uh, the transformation of the Champs-Élysées will also uh, shift the identity of place in terms of how people uh, relate to the Champs Elysees, or do you feel that this uh, historical vision will just continue? Uh, and you mentioned the Jardin des Champs Elysees and how the Champs Elysees was used before. And the reality is, we're potentially going back towards uh, something that was uh, similar to what uh, and how the Champs Elysees was envisioned at the very beginning. Uh, will this shift the identity of place for? in the Shaw and the identity of Paris? Or do you see this really uh, an opportunity to really uh, send a message globally in terms of how Paris is transforming uh, its city and, and how it's focusing on uh, the local population and driving uh, some of the new uses of our cities moving forward? I think we are sending this message since uh, several years because the mayor really wanted Paris to be a like pioneer city in terms of uh, urban transformation and uh, ecological transformation. And uh, the message we are sending is that uh, people have the right uh, to, like uh, as pedestrians, to be uh, to be safe on public space, uh, to to also breathe a clean air, uh, and to be able. We often uh, use that image to like uh, let the to say let the children like walk without uh, holding the parents hand you know and yeah. that's for us it's a very important metric saying that we want a child centric city and also so to think that you can go on the champs elysees and your children can like feel safe and can play there and can walk easily and uh, starting by that it means a lot of things uh, on uh, like how you adapt public space how you adapt crossing the street that's what we do everywhere in Paris, and that's what we want also on the Champs Elysees. And um, we think that uh, uh, like urban planning can really uh, implement this vision and and uh, show that uh, people are at the center of city, uh, and uh, and that they can yes like feel safe, feel comfortable, and uh, and be in like a, a clean environment. So that's very important. And, and finally, and I'm a uh, provision too, and I'm sure it's a question that's dear to provisions and even the world that will actually gather in 2024 for the Olympic Games. What will be the place of the Champs Elysees uh, during the Ol Olympic Games uh, celebration? We celebrated the World Cup, we've celebrated many other uh, elements of history. Uh, what will uh, the place of the Champs Elysees be during uh, the Olympic Games? So there will be some like uh, installations for the Olympics on the Place de la Concorde, so just uh, beside the, the Champs Elysees. And so, of course, the Champs Elysees will be a place for for people to celebrate and for like walking. And since it's just beside Place de la Concorde and in the garden, also there will be some installation. So it will be at the heart of the Olympic experience, also. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Philip. Thank you, Marion. Thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing the Champs-Élysées uh, transformation uh, first in 2024 and then in, in 2030. And uh, hopefully uh, our World City community will be able to, to be in Paris uh, during the Olympic Games and uh, 
and see that uh, with their own eyes. So thank you very much for your time and I uh, uh, hope you uh, have a, a good rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Marion.